All right. Well, <laughs> that was super duper weird. I've never seen that happen before. I couldn't even click the restart my my computer. I actually had to hold down the power button to get rid of that. That was crazy. Even after I, I control I control or command option escaped um, every single app. I could there's nothing I could do. I literally had to hold down the power button to force restart my whole force turn off my computer and then turn it back on. Wow. Okay, anyways, all right. Bygones are now bygones, and I am off to create this this frog. Okay, froggy. I was liking where the frog was going. I hope it didn't uh, erase the frog or anything, or erase my last changes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. I do need a new tablet for sure. I, what I really need to do is go buy a soldering iron because I think I could fix it with a soldering iron. Um, okay, sprites. Common frog. Okay, great. Got the frog. Still looks like I how I drew him. Yay! Alright, that was saved. And let's make sure this is exported right. Wait. Export render video. I'm trying to be more organized about where I put all my sprites and everything by putting things in a single common folder. Make it a little more easy. And then I'll, I'll, I'm actually going to separate these by sprite sheet. So the common sprite sheet has most everything and then all the little sprites. And then there's other sprite sheets like the backgrounds and just keeping them separated by sprite sheet. Okay. Let's see where we are now. All right. Okay, cool. We got frogs. They're looking to the left. The thing I was about to do when it was all crashing and everything was make it so frogs are randomly flipped. So we can do the system in now. E dot render dot sprite dot set flipped x if r two is less than one hundred twenty eight. Cool. Yeah, everything's fixed. It wasn't just Xcode. Yeah, I know when I was trying to quit everything, I was quitting trying to quit Xcode, but it was literally everything in my whole computer. Like, I couldn't even click the restart button. It was so weird. Yes, that one frog is a magic. Jesus frog. In fact, let's fix that right now. Let's make sure all the frogs are on lily pads. So... When we create the lily pads, this is a good place to do that. Like, if we create a lily pad, then we might create a frog. I know, Yosemite, what the... What the... Yeah, nice one. That reminds me of college. All right, cool. And we've got X, we've got Y, so we don't need that. We've got R, R2. Let's get R3. Frogs. Look how quick, look how easy this is to create a frog. 
It's like a single line. Oh, we want the position to be the same. as the tile position. So this is gonna be this, get tile pause, X, Y. Oh, now we're not using R3 anymore. All right. Oh, wait, wait, we do wanna use R3. Let's use R3 for if there is a frog. So if R3 is like less than We'll give it um, a third, so that'll be 85. There. Okay, let's hope that puts a frog right on top of the middle of a lily pad. All right, cool, we have a lot of frogs. And it looks like they need to go a little higher Tiny bit higher. So let's add a little to that position. Say four pixels. And probably a lot less of them. So let's do less than, R3 is less than 31. That'll decrease the percentage of frogs we have. Oh, we can make the frog do a little pouchy type thing on his Yeah, now we got now we got three frogs on this screen. There's no frogs on this one. We need to create at least one frog. Why does this screen not have it? That is one frog. Okay, I don't like I don't like this how this is doing so few frogs. So I'm just save all of the positions. Of the lily pads. And then do a certain number of frogs. So save the position. Positions dot push back. All right, now we can do a count of frogs. All right, and we're gonna, each one of these times we're gonna do a random a random element from the positions array. We want to check if the if the positions have size. Nicer the frogs? Oh, trust me, I'm gonna be real nice. Frogs are great. They're handy and they're friendly. How complicated can code really get? Is there an absolute? No, there's no absolute. It's infinite, it can, can infinitely get complicated. Trust me. And um, especially if you're writing brainfuck, this is, oh yeah, this is the language you wanna check out. No, this is not what you want. Where is, give me an example.
No, there's some worse ones. There's definitely some worse languages, I forget. Anyways. Anyways, you can write really, really complex stuff in any language, and it can get more and more and more complicated for sure. So yeah, positions that size less than or equal to zero, break. Otherwise, grab a random position. So we're gonna go positions dot begin plus um, drand. So we need to get x and y. So this is um, the current. Well, no, we need to grab a position first. Ah. Oh. Oh, this is so tricky. How to deterministically grab a random number? Oh. Yes, yes, this is a good way to put it, professional novice. You can do seemingly complex programs and write them simply, and you can do simple programs that are written totally complexly. Can I make it rain in the game right now? No, I cannot make it rain, rain, rain in the game right now. But give me a day and I can get it to rain. That's one of the plans, is to make it so it can rain. There's going to be lots of different weather. There's going to be, hopefully I can get snow in there too. Just, you know, cover everything in white. Put footsteps everywhere. Rain is really easy. Just darken the whole screen a little bit. Make everything a little bit bluish. Add in a bunch of rain. Make some ripples on the water okay so I need to grab I need to grab a random number oh okay no problem I'll just get the random um, let's do this get rand one and this is gonna be I this is zero mod that by positions dot size there. Now we're grabbing a random element from the positions. Ah, yeah. Yes. How complex something is, is truly in the eye of the beholder. Okay, so after we're done getting this position, this is going to be um, it in direction of it plus something and then the r let's do r of zero we don't need that okay we do need the x and y though yeah true 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 complex is not complicated these are totally different concepts Nice, yeah, there you go. Character creation's fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that one. But I'll check them out. I love I love all those sciencey YouTube videos and stuff. So we're gonna grab the position, so we're gonna go int x equals zero, y equals zero, and then this get tile pause. I can Yeah, pass in in direction of it, get out x and y. Set a breakpoint here to make sure this that's that's correct. And then we can go this get rand one f x y and this one is this get rand two f x y. So that was kind of complicated to get a, to get the frogs to be, to work how I wanted them to. But oh well, this is good to have that done. Nice, cool man. Book series characters. All right. It's frogs. We have how many positions did we get? Nice, good for you, Arch Lord. You can't make textures like you can't draw textures. Art is definitely one of those things. You gotta learn it though. I recommend getting a tablet and looking at 
watching people's speed videos on YouTube. That's how I learned. It took me, you know, a few months of just like watching people do speed videos and ignoring the, the fact that I had a tablet until, until I finally picked up my tablet and started using it. And then having watched all those YouTube speed videos, like it really wasn't that hard to do art as I thought. Oh, oh, cool. Yeah, I highly recommend getting a tablet, man. There's ones for like 75 bucks that are too, super decent. That's the one I have. It's like a $75 version. I do too. Isn't that, aren't they cool? Like I was addicted to those for a while. I would, I would literally spend, instead of watching a movie or whatever, entertaining myself in some way, I would literally entertain myself by watching YouTube speed art videos. Some of them are like 45 minutes long where they make these epic fantasy scenes and stuff like that they're just really fun to watch how an artist puts it all together and once you have like absorbed all that you start seeing oh that's how an artist creates a background that's how an artist creates a character that's how an artist creates an arm that's coming towards the screen or whatever you know you you can get good at it that way just by watching okay how many positions did we get all right, good. These are all the lily pads, 23 lily pads. And the it that we're pointing to points to X150, 24. Oh, well, the last thing we need to do is we need to erase the iterator. So it equals positions.erase it. And in fact, we can yeah, we can just do, we'll have to do it afterwards. So there. All right, let's just see if it worked. I don't want to mess with this too much longer. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, that's funny, right? Oh, the pun that, that you noticed that I didn't. Nice. Yeah, right? All right, Vlad, see you, man. Thanks, Hazard, thank you. Whoa, pretty awesome. Is that Walt Whitman? Looks like Walt Whitman in his later days. Yeah, that's so detailed. It's crazy cool. Like this stuff blows me away, you know. I'm def I'm definitely not this talented of an artist, you know what I mean? This takes this takes a lot of time and skill to create this kind of art. <clears throat> but it was cool is you can watch people do stuff like this on, you know, speed speed art on YouTube. That's that good. I know, right? It's basically a photograph. That's how that's how high quality that art is. All right, here we got two frogs, three frogs. We got three frogs on this screen. One, two, three frogs on this screen. They're all on the lily pads. There's one, two, three frogs here. Yay, okay, this is working. Uh, that's all I wanted. I wanted the, the frogs to be on the lily pads and for them to, for there to be about three of them per screen. In fact, let's make it slightly random here. We'll add slightly random element to the um, quantity. So we'll do this. Get ran one for something weird and mod that. So there we possibly would add zero or one to that. So some screens are going to have three frogs. Some screens are going to have four frogs. Yeah, Don Bluth. Cool. Thanks, Naxer. Okay, so now that we got, now we got the frogs on the lily pads, it's time to do the animation for where they eat the flies. I'm stoked about this part. I love when, it, when stuff eats other stuff. And um, this is where I'm going to need my tablet again. Damn it. Stupid tablet. I'm scared to use my tablet now. 
that had cra I'm pretty sure it was related to the tablet that had crashed last time. Maybe I'll make this with my mouse. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna make this with my mouse. Let's add one more frame to this one though. I'm gonna add one more frame where he has his throat all huge, so he's gonna be like I think I'm going to do a couple more frames, actually. One more in the middle here. Where he's kind of got a bigger... Make us throw red. Good idea. Good idea. I probably should make him something other than green because he's not really popping off of the, the, you know, he's not really popping it. There, that looks like a good tone for red. Oh, thanks. So there, he starts with sort of a reddish throat. Now let's get him so, uh, what hue is this? Hue 23. We're gonna do a color similar to this super bright green, but hue 23. And we'll make his whole throat light up super red. Like this. Yeah, maybe blue or yellow. Yeah, for the frog. Those would be good compliments for the water and all that. He's going to be on top of the lily pad, so let's see what this looks like now. Okay, and he wants, I want to do one more frame. Wait, not this one. One more frame like this where he goes back. His throat like retracts a bit. Hey, what's up Arcane? Welcome man. Hey, good seeing you. Okay, one thing, I kind of miss seeing this one green dot right here. Yeah, that might work out. Let's we'll see how that looks in slow-mo. In fact, oh, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna make a frame where he's just sitting there. Yeah, let's do a frog croak. Let's make this a separate animation. So I'm gonna save this as frog croak. There, so now we got two, two animations for the frog already. We got the idle, where he's got two frames, super slow, and then we got this one where he croaks. We got five frames, and each frame we want to be like maybe 0.2 or so. Hey, what's up, Lighter Thief? Man, once again, you know what? I'm, I'm back from vacation, Lighter Thief, and 
I'm realizing how much of a difference it made. Your one suggestion to check out those tu those tutorials um, regarding perspective, because man, all of the art in the game, I've I've been thinking about that so much lately, and improving the art where possible. Like the statues, they used to be so much shorter. I can show you. Um, Let's see if that works with Frog Croak. It's had five frames. Yeah, it looks like it should be right. Um, yeah, so the mountains, those look way better. Let's go to a level. There's a level up here. Yeah, so many things in the game. Like the trees, I still think look a bit um, flat and 2D. But just giving everything a little bit of perspective is really helping the art. And once again, thank you, Lighter Thief. That was, that was all thanks to you. Really, really great suggestion. Among many great suggestions from everyone. <clears throat> Here we go. So yeah, the statues used to be way sh what I what I do. Oh, I think the squirrel squirrel messed it up. Yeah, squirrel. Okay, I need to fix the squirrel AI really quick. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, once again, thank you. That was awesome. Okay, Squirrel AI, there should be something where it's like target none or Duran, no, target, target nearest friend there. Friend or foe, anything that's moving, Squirrel's going to run from. Yeah, yeah, totally. Slowly but surely, you know, it takes a long time to do art well, but yeah, it's coming along. Okay, let's get these frogs to croak. Not die, but, but you know, just croak. Okay, so the frog AI. Sequence croak. If... No, yeah, if ran, so every... Let's do every five seconds. Then we're going to animate croak. Let's see if that works. Really like these behavior trees. I'm glad I wrote this, that whole system. Yeah, cool. Oh, they look good. Ah. Oh, it's so great. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I would like them to face... I would like them to randomly face different directions sometimes. Um, animation DSL? Is that a library or something? Yeah, um, I'm using the game engine Coco Studio X, which you might know already. I'm just, yeah, this is pretty much a, a handmade system for rendering because I'm using an entity component system. Most game engines are not written around an entity, at least open source engines are not written primarily to be entity component systems so I had to create my own render component with its own animation soft uh, animation functions and stuff there's one called um, well render system render system has animate frame I believe or get it no, no. yeah animate frame yeah so it's a custom system <laughs> that's a great idea oh my gosh I gotta write this one down that's great I love it Jib kissing the frog oh oh what you were looking at there a fool's duty was my behavior tree. 
So yeah, it's a DSL. Um, these are behavior trees. Yes, it's a custom system I developed for for this game. Um, I I just looked for I it was, this was actually a suggestion from somebody on the live stream. They're like, hey, why don't you start using behavior trees for your AI? And in fact, this is one of the best things in the whole game because it allows an AI to be written without any code. This is completely text. It's a, basically a script or something like that. But this is this is the AI for the fly. Yeah, right? You turn into a frog and the frog turns into you. Okay, so we got the frog. He croaks. But I'd like it to be able to change to face different directions. So let's see what happens when we do sequence. Um, if ran... Uh, Uh, yeah, this would be better if I could do face opposite. So I'm going to make sure that the AI system for face, the face command, can be opposite. There it is. Yeah, face opposite. All this is going to do is go e .render .sprite .set flipped x not e .render .sprite get flipped x or is flipped x is flipped x and then return true that cancels that finishes off the the command okay so yeah well now we can call face opposite um and let's make sure that yeah hazard they already are yep take a closer look the, the trees all of them are animated in the wind yes i changed the statues in both the caves and the outer so they're a little thicker just a tiny bit thicker looking yeah i'm gonna add a lot more though yeah, yeah, I'm about to I'm about to run it. Check it out. They're they're definitely uh, swaying in the wind a little bit. Um, I could maybe make them sway a little more, a little more drastically. But I like the fact that it's a bit subtle. Let's see if that works. So, if that worked, then the frog will sometimes face left, sometimes face right. Yeah, it worked. Cool. So I'm watching the frog in the very middle, and he one time he did his croak to the left, and one time he did his croak to the right. Oh, and there's one more thing I need to fix. Um, the cr this uh, first frame here, he's now got a, a red throat, so frog zero. And frog one, re-export those. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, and the sounds too. This is really kind of all based on the sound. I came up, I found this sound on freesound.org. It's great ambient style texture with some frogs in it. And um, that's kind of what inspired putting frogs in here. Sweet. Oh, that looks awesome. And in fact, I kind of like him being green to start with. I might change him to be purple, actually, or blue or yellow. But for now, he's good enough. I'm going to make him now so he sticks out his tongue and can catch flies. Here it comes, the cherry on top. I love, this is the part I've been waiting for. 
where you can eat stuff. So we're gonna call this one frog. This one's frog croak. We're gonna go frog eat. Let's reopen frog croak. So we've got that waiting in the wings. Frog eat. So he's gonna start. Starts like looking to the to the right, and his tongue whips out really fast, and then comes back in. That's really all there is to it. Okay, this should be a pretty easy animation. Oh, we want this to be this frame. Yeah, they're they're not all um, they're not all in sync. Let's add one more type so they can guarantee they're not all in sync. They might have been all in sync there for a second, but they shouldn't be. Yeah, the purple bushes, right? Just a tiny pop of color. Yeah. I'm going to start adding more and more little elements like that where there's just a little bit more color here and there. Um, the per There's also some little lotus pink colored lotus flowers on the um, on top of the lily pads. So we can also face Rand and that's just going to be um, DRAND F01 less than 0 0.5. Yeah, okay, so let's guarantee that the frogs are all facing in different directions and we can take it out of where it creates the, yeah, this little bit right here, we don't need these two lines, so that's, it's more simple. In fact, we don't need any of that. We can just set this to be zero. All right, and then so that sets that sets it so every frog should be in sync to start, and then in the we'll do this in the behavior. So. If the frog has no target, we're going to target the nearest neutral, which is a fly. And then we're also going to go face rand, which is going to randomly make it face something. And then we'll call this turn, actually. This is the frog turning. It has a random chance every single time the behavior triggers to face the opposite direction. So they should start out different, and they should kind of randomly switch. Oh, I think I see what you mean. There are they were actually animating in sync. Their timing might still be in sync. Let's see if that it should be breaking it up a little bit. Oh, no, now they're not in sync. I think they did start out in sync, though. But that's all right. If they break if they break up their animations a little bit after time, over time, I think that'll be okay. Yeah, Lime Studios, I use Git. I use Git all the time, every day, a lot. But yeah, I don't use it as often while I'm in my live stream. But yeah, I use Git status all the time, check new files. For example, I've already got a lot of new files for this frog that I'll be checking in. And then yeah, I used git diff to show my differences. I have a, I have a shortcut command for that, just called D. Yep, I use git. Git all the way, man. I love git. Yeah, totally. I think it is just once, yeah. I think, um, well, I could make it, what could I do? I guess I could go, go delay Rand. Delay point two, delay Rand. Let's see what that would do. So it should be adding 0.2 seconds when it does that delay, and then we'll do a little more the next delay. All 
All right, if subtype is K behavior rand, then we're going to go e.ai.delay timer plus equals just a random number, rand F01. Otherwise, Yeah, okay. There, that should guarantee the frogs are out of sync always. By the very first command that's going to run is it's targeting. It should start with no target, it gets a target, and when it gets a target, it randomly delays. Yeah. Cool, that worked. Let's make sure it's, it's for sure working by, we can set a breakpoint here. And just make sure it's hitting this line where it's adding a random timer to the to them. Oh, so it didn't work. It's supposed to be subtype two, maybe. All right, cool. We're hitting this. Let's see what this happens to be. Subtype negative one. No subtype for this command. What is this the frog? This is the fly. Delay 0 0.2, delay rand. Should be okay. Wait, maybe it's that. Okay, so we should hit this breakpoint here. <clears throat> Still no love. Well, I would use a conditional breakpoint to break on this if the profile was of type frog, but I know that doesn't work. You can't compare strings very easily in the at conditional breakpoints, so I'm just going to do a manual breakpoint like um, if e dot profile dot profile dot get title equals frog, then we want to break. So I'm gonna figure out why. This isn't working. So if a frog calls delay, it's going to stop right here. Okay, so the frog's not even calling delay. Well, that explains something. Okay, I'm going to take a quick little break. Be right back.
All right, I think I know what it is. If that's, no, that's not it. Maybe a face ran, delay ran. This is not hitting that breakpoint. Maybe it's not even hitting the target. Oh man, this is crazy. Maybe it's that. Target none, delay ran. Okay, I'm kind of confused. I'm wondering why this isn't working. Sit on. I'm gonna turn on debug mode to see what sequence the frog's actually running. Oh, the frog doesn't have any sequence. Doesn't make any sense. I know for a fact it's running the croak, it's running the turn. Uh, oh man, I didn't really want to debug all this stuff right now. I just wanted to draw the frog and have it get eaten. Right? So fun. Debugging. Yay. Oh, I don't even have breakpoints on. Ah. Uh. There. Yay. Okay. Subtype. Rand. Delay timer plus equals rand. It worked. And why isn't it showing? Uh. You don't need known values. There. Ah, so it wasn't showing the sequence because it didn't have a name. Uh, because it was called target. Should we call it choose? And then you would see it. It looks like you can't find the nearest neutral.
Oh well. Actually, if I wanted to do it the right way, I would call target nearest fly. That's really what I'm looking for. But let's hack this in. Hmm. Let's draw it first. Okay. So you want his I want his tongue to pop out really fast. Come back in quick like a snake. Psh! Grab the fly. Psh! I want a complimentary color for his reddish. Yeah, I might do. Let's make it brighter. We'll draw a single black dot. This represents the fly at opacity 61.8. There. Pale yellow belly. It's a good idea. Yes, 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 definitely. Cylinder tutorial, cool. I'll do that. Yeah, I definitely. This trees are one of the next things I'm gonna work on. So I've I've kind of redone. Um, I didn't have to redo the bushes, but the trees definitely are gonna need it. So yeah. All right, so this is just gonna be a really quick like. Psh, psh, psh. Let's run that. Oh, cool. Nice. I see. That's a good way to do it, putting some down some cylinders first, or cylinder-like guides. That's cool. Nice, nice example. Okay, so I'm gonna add to the frog his property list. He's gonna have a new animation called eat. Two frames really quick. And at first, I'm just going to have him randomly do it. Another one? Let's see what this is. Oh, oh, okay. That's one way to do it, too. Just a bunch. But I like it. I like the concept. A bunch of these guidelines. Is this your art? This looks like your art. It's good. I like that tree. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice. Thank you, though. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> oh, those are yours. Okay, cool. Nice. I thought they looked like yours. All right, yeah, let's make the frog. Just start by randomly doing his eat animation, and then we'll make it so he only does his eat if there's a fly nearby. 
All right, let's turn off all that debug info. We don't need that anymore. Come on, eat something. This looks like they're not doing it. Let's see, did I do this right? Animation, eat, frog eat, frame count two, looks all right. the heck hey what's up Locarno yo evening okay we got frog zero frog one frog croak zero through four and then frog eat zero and one so that's why this animation is loading correctly if I set that to three it should break yeah cool we're, we're broken cool okay so um, the animation is loading correctly is for eat. We're in the frog. So going back to the frog behavior, if ran to animate eat, this should work. Let's make sure both the frames of the frog eating animation are what we expected them to be. Frog eat zero. He's like the tiny. Yeah, that works. Come on, you. Oh, yeah, nice. He did it. It looks like. Why is it so rare? This should be a random chance every one second that he should animate his eat. Oh, probably because it's calling neutral all the time. So if I call target nearest friend, then it's not going to eat up the AI behavior. There we go. Yay, now they're eating all the time. All right, cool. And let's see if they croak as well. Wait, set their eating animation to something more rare for every four seconds. So now they should eat and croak. Nice. They're croaking, they're eating. Okay, so now the next thing is to make it so he's really, they're smart about eating. So they, they eat only when there's a fly nearby. You mean, do you mean ripples? What do you mean by water circles? If you mean ripples, that's a good idea. I would like to add some ripples. Okay, so we need a way to target the flies. Um, 
I guess this this is this needs to be its own smartest thing. So target nearest fly. That's really how it should be. So ripples? Do you mean ripples? Okay, now we need a way to target a specific profile. Ripples, oh, okay. Yeah, ripples would be great. I can add those. Love to. I'm definitely going to be adding a whole shader for that. So I've got this whole reflection shader started and everything. I think a good way to do ripples would be inside the reflection shader. So that's definitely on the list. I was going to put that with the grasshoppers or the water hoppers. So in addition to flies, I'm going to have water hoppers and they, they'll like bounce on the water and on the land and stuff like that. And whenever they land on water, they'll do a ripple. So that's going to be maybe tomorrow, maybe later tonight I'll start that. Okay, so the fly, I want to be able to target a specific type of profile. So looking for where it's behavior target. Where did that go? Responder speed target. Here we go. Okay. Um, All right, I'm going to make a function in the, is there a profile system? There should be. Yeah, cool. We've got a profile system. We've got a listener pause. Let's do this. We're going to do static void. get eids vector eid and we're looking for a certain title profile title so this is going to get every single entity id if it has a certain title Now, if e.ai.target mask is zero, then we're going to do profile system. Why isn't it auto completing? All right, so profile system. Yeah, live studios, thank you. Have a great one. Enjoy yourself. All right, Ladder Thief, thanks, same to you. 
Enjoy. Thanks again. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Uh. So we're going to loop over every single profile component. Look for the title. So for auto ref or auto EID in entity get all profile component. What's up, baby? Yeah, that's a, that's what we wanted right there. All I need. Check the title size. Now, if profile dot get title, no, it's profile dot profile get title equals title. We can go eids dot pushback eid. There we go. That's going to get all the eids of given type. So let's make sure that works. Um, the frogs do it right away. So we can go to the system. Here it is. Let's make sure that works right there. Let's do this a little differently. All right, so this should break right away. And we'll step into this profile system, get it. And that way it should make it so frogs can target a random fly. So it'll, it'll list all the flies and then it'll randomly choose one of them as its target. Actually, it'll, it'll, it'll use the nearest one as its target. Sweet. Okay, we're already getting broken into this. Um, let's check it out. It's clear. Well, okay, just returned, but let's see what happened. Potential, this is the array. Yeah, all right, cool. These are all the flies, right? There's like 30 of them or so. Good. So let's set the breakpoint here. Actually there. So what ended up happening? We do we did find a closest EID. Closest EID is 560. All right. It looks like this is working. So I'm going to go I'm going to stop it. I'm run it again. All right, let's um, let's see if it works by um, making it so the frog will randomly use his eating animation if the target is near. So if target near, and we do um, this is x and y. On the x, we'll do ten, and on the y, we'll do ten as well. So if the target is close by, we're gonna animate the eat.
Yeah, it's not working. Okay. So we need to pay attention to the the, um, the debug information. Just make sure. There, it's got a target 522. Hmm, I think I messed up um, some of this system debug output. Oh, oh, I see what is going on. The frog starts off by randomly targeting the nearest fly. But flies are really random, so there's a very small chance that a fly that it was originally targeted will be nearby in the future. So we need to make sure that when it target it just it constantly re-updates its targets. Let's turn off draw debug because that's not helping seeing all that tons of information on the screen. And let's make it so the behavior of the frog is that he constantly is retargeting. There. There. See how that works. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working either. But we can watch the debug output now and see if it is at least updating its target. Yeah, okay, 522, 535. Mm. 531, 520, yeah, it does appear to be doing that correctly. I don't know. I might have to pause this one. What computer am I using? I'm using a MacBook Pro Retina. It's really great. Awesome computer. Yeah, well, I couldn't figure this out right now. What I really wanted to do was to make it so the frogs target the nearest fly and constantly target the nearest fly. I think that is working, but it's not. he's not ever lashing his tongue out. He should be doing the anime tongue 
Here, let's animate the E every time it targets a new fly. Oh, I mean, what if it was huge? Oh, maybe I'm not doing, maybe I'm not doing near right. Fly has near, if target, oh, there's a space. Oh, no wonder the whole time there's a space between those. Duh, okay. Let's see if that works now. Come on, eat the flies when they get near you, man. It's gonna be great. They taste, oh yeah! Nice. Okay, cool. What it needs is um, this animation should be only one frame like that. We can er erase E1. Why does it keep allowing me to do that without warning me? Well, let's see. Yeah, it didn't work. Raw sheets, common frog eat, starting at zero. Why doesn't that work? Dude, what a crazy day. Crazy bugs today. I don't see any problem with this. It just doesn't work. Maybe you can't export a, a, a video sequence of one frame long. There, frog eat zero. Okay, let's make frog eat animation only one frame long. So this is like lightning quick. It's just like boom. And he'll eat when they're when it's way closer. So that whole tenth of a second goes by, and the fly can go quite far. So all right, I guess all we would need to do is just remove the target. And that'll be done. So let's see if that, we can do that. So we'll call animate eat, and then we'll go remove target. It's just gonna totally delete the target entity. Okay, we've got, we can delete that. All right, <clears throat> speed, dir, spawn, launch, melee, delay, timer, HP, mask, screen. Here we go. Else if sub type equals K behavior target. And e dot ai dot target is greater than zero. And the target is not the player. We should never be able to delete the player entity.
then we're going to delete it. So this is, yeah, world area delete entity. But e.ai.target. All right. So if this works, then that should work. It should hit that breakpoint. And it should remove the fly. Cool, we're already hitting it. Let's turn off that breakpoint. Nice, I think it's working. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's totally eating them. Nice. Oh, this is great. You work, Froggy Frog. Oh yeah. Okay, let's make it so he um he doesn't eat unless the flies are really close. Like I want to see them practically on top of the the frog when they get eaten. Let's put a ton of flies on the screen, see what happens. We've got 50 right now. Let's try 500 flies. This could overload things a bit here, but let's see what happens. <laughs> oh yeah, feeding frenzy. Cool. So what will make these even better is to um, um, give them some sound effects. So like a tiny little t -t -t -t, like really quick noise where their, their tongue's going out. I can make their tongues maybe a little longer. That might be really fun. Um, I could give them a yellow belly or change change the color of the frog a bit. Um, but this is cool. So the frogs are eating the flies and that's really all I wanted. And you can also see that the effect that when the flies get near another living entity, they start to freak out. So they like buzz and they, they get obnoxious. So like when they're around the, um, the enemies, you can see they're like swarming it and running around my feet too. It's, it's right around the player's feet. It should be around the player's head, but I'll work on that slowly. So yeah, that's cool. 500 flies. Yay. Okay, so that works. I'm going to set that back to where it was. And I'm going to call it done for today. So that's cool. I got this whole mission accomplished to have frogs and have them eat flies. And I'm very happy with it. Um, but I'm going to keep on improving it tonight. I'll add more sound effects and maybe make the frog hop up and down. Stuff like that. What's up, MTB? Hello, welcome to the stream. Um, sorry I'm shutting it down right now, but thank you for the compliment, and um, I hope uh, I hope you get something out of this. Hope this is like a cool video to watch and maybe learn something, or maybe you're just interested in how games are made or whatever. Anyways, welcome, welcome. All right, so yeah, that's it. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, same time, 4 p.m. ish Pacific. Uh, if you're just tuning in, this game's called Songbringer. It's been in development for about seven months. Um, it's going to be uh, developed for another six months or so, and then it's coming out on Steam 
Windows Mac Linux. It's already been greenlit. Um, yeah, good night, Doc. It's good to be back. And um, it's also been kickstarted successfully, so that's how I'm able to do this full time. And um, it's also going to be coming out on Retro VGS, the new console system which uses cartridges. So it's a long project, at least another year of development. You know, six months more until you guys can really play it. And then another six months of improving it and porting it to different platforms and stuff like that. So anyways, that's it. Check you guys later.